Hey there, Dr. Tom here, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. Well, hey, if you listened to my last video, I introduced the two major methods we use to do uh, leadership research. Now, in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about a particular kind of one of those methods. So I talked last time about quantitative research and about qualitative research. Now, in the world of qualitative research, where the data are words, there's a particular type of research called exegetical. Now, what the idea is, it's qualitative research, but somehow there's between the data and us is a separation of time, of culture, and of language. So maybe it was written 2,000 years ago, maybe it was written in a different language, and it was written in a different culture where the people had different knowledge and history and, and all that available to them. Now to help me help you understand that last little bit about the role of, you know, how these all kind of roll together, uh, think about a researcher who lives a thousand years in the future from now. And suppose they're reading something from our lifetime that references September 11th. Now, if that thing was written in 2005, September 11th means something. If that was written in 1995, September 11th doesn't really mean something. Oh, wait a minute, it does. If you're from Germany, it that's the date of some of the worst firebombing of World War II. From the U.S., it doesn't. But you see what happens is you have to kind of know where is this person? When was this written? It, you know, it may be the reference to the 11th day of September was just incidental, a detail of the story. It may be it's a very significant reference. It depends on exactly when it was written. It depends on what context. And so that's just one example of the challenges. At any rate, so uh, what's driving this is uh, early on in my PhD studies, I, I was reading some works by uh, Peter Drucker, a very famous management scholar. And he said something that intrigued me. He said, you know, if you want to understand how to lead people, uh, two of the things you ought to read is one is the works of Cyrus the Great. So Cyrus the Great was a king of Persia about 3,000 years ago. And he said, the other things you ought to read are the works of the Apostle Paul. Now, if you grew up going to church, you recognize both those. So Paul wrote about half the books in what we sometimes call the, the New Testament. So it's the, the Christian scriptures, the uniquely Christian scriptures. And in the Hebrew scriptures, there's a, a history book called Daniel. And if you've ever read Daniel, there's a Cyrus in there, King Cyrus of Persia. That's the guy we're talking about. So there's some very interesting things that uh, uh, he wrote and he uh, were written about him. So at any rate, so that's what we're doing today. So today what we're doing is we're looking at something the Apostle Paul wrote, again, about 2,000 years ago. And he was writing to a fledgling church in Thessalonica. And he was writing to the specific leaders when he said, you know, this is what I really urge you to do. Admonish the idol encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. So as a leadership scholar, you look at this and you immediately realize the significance of this. See, in the leadership research, it really wasn't until about 1970 that people started to say, you know, we tend to tell ourselves that as a manager, the fair thing to do is to treat everybody the same. And Right about 1970, people started to say, wait, is that really true? Now, there's actually a leadership theory called situational leadership, which was one of the first to challenge that. Now, that one didn't go as far as this because the, the only variable they looked at really was uh, time and tenure in the position. But nowadays, say, for instance, transformational leadership, uh, one of the four premises of transformational leadership is this idea of individualized consideration is people are, are unique, treat them uniquely. And so ethicists, leadership ethicists would say, you know, if someone says, well, the only fair thing to do is treat your people the same, they would respond and say, well, because we know everybody's different, the least fair thing you can do is treat everybody the same. Now, the thing is, Paul wrote this 2,000 years ago, and, and this is fantastic, right? Admonish, admonish the idol. 
So there are times when there's somebody who's who's not getting it done, is goofing around, just simply not being productive because of you know laziness. Maybe they're spending all their time talking, being a busybody, causing trouble, not minding their business. Well, they need to be admonished. They need to be spoken to. Now, sometimes there's people who are faint-hearted. Now, the idea there is that maybe they feel overwhelmed. Maybe they don't realize they can do this. Uh, and I'll tell you, that's an interesting prospect. It always has been at Tandem is there's always been some amount of leaders or, excuse me, engineers who are very intelligent. You can see they're capable and they'll, they'll get in this state where they think they feel overwhelmed and think they can't do it. And you can clearly see they can't. And you know what they need? They need encouragement. And you know how you could destroy them, admonish them. Now, when you have someone who's lazy, spending all this time talking and chatting and not working, do you know how you can destroy their career? By trying to encourage them. See, you got to get it right. you got to treat them right. And finally, help the weak. Sometimes there's people that just, just for whatever reason, they're just, over, you know, it's kind of the extreme of faint-hearted where they're just simply, you know, maybe you need to teach them something, you need to take them under your wing. But the, the unmistakable point here is that you figure out each person and what they need. And to be clear, this is not a, well, you go in your office and think about it and come out and start handing out the appropriate responses. This probably is going to involve a conversation. Talk with them. Try to figure out. But this is a great model. Is it that they're idle? You know, they're lazy? Is that they're afraid? Are they just lack lack the, 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 the power, lack the, the ability figure it out which one now notice Paul also says be patient with all of them so the very important idea here is we don't ever want to be the kind of manager that's looking to see who's breaking the rules just who do we need to fire see when you're a patient manager your mind frame is who do we need to help and why is that well there's a lot of reasons and one of the reasons is that you used to be an engineer also and so we want to show them the grace that either was shown to you or you wish was shown to you. And here's the thing that a lot of engineering managers really don't understand what a great opportunity it is. When you catch somebody really messing up and you confront them, and notice this idea of patience does not mean you don't confront people. It means you figure out what they need. If they're idle, you get in their face and you admonish them. If they're faint-hearted, you, you encourage them. But one way or another, when they're not doing well, you show them grace. And so if they made some really dumb mistake or really messed up, this is a golden opportunity to show grace. Why? Because they know they messed up. And if you come in and show them grace, you've got a loyal follower for life. Because we all make mistakes and boy, we don't like it when we get pummeled. But you get someone who comes along and helps you say, you know what, I've been there. Let me, let, me, let me walk you through this. Let me be your friend. Let me, let me coach you through it. Let me help you, you know, make this right. That's, that's good leadership. At any rate, so hopefully that helps. 2,000 years old, still good advice. Hey, at any rate, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you don't mind, could you give me a like, maybe subscribe if there's something you'd like to uh, have me talk about, you know, put a note there. I'll be happy to do it. At any rate, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.